Outrocast. Erwin, Justin, thank you both for doing this. So much to ask both of you, but we'll first throw it to Justin. The first episode, which you wrote, how much of that that we see on screen resembles your first draft at it? Um, wow, that's an interesting question. Um, it, you know, scri- you know, scripts are always evolving, especially when you're in the shooting process. So it's hard for me to actually say the shape of it um, is exactly the same. The, the device of the direct address and directly addressing Rahima was in the conception and beginning with um, her in the orphanage and that moment where she turns and says, look familiar when she's about to deliver a tray to Mother Superior, uh, that beginning is exactly the same. And that ending uh, where she discovers the truth about her husband's relationship with Diane and, and consequently teaches Rahima a lesson by shoving the tray. Those were always the beginnings and the ends. Hmm, interesting. Well, Erwin, this is just an, yet another great credit for you. I digging into you, Austin Powers and Loaded Weapon. You've worked on some great comedies beyond the dramatic and thriller kind of titles as well. But how did this project come to you and how did Justin wind up on your radar as well? Well, Justin has been on my, Justin has been more than on my radar. Justin and I have been working together and really close friends for about 20 years. Um, So that answers that. Uh, It came to me initially about 15 or 16 years ago um, when Francis Lawrence called me and he had read a review of the book. uh, And he had read a review of the book um, in Vogue magazine. Mm -hmm. And we both then wound up reading the book, really liked it. I don't really remember what happened after that because it was so long ago. Uh, But the idea kept circling around and we talk about it every so often. I think Julian Fellows then for a while had the rights to the book and so on. But make a long story short, a couple of years ago, it came around again, this time We sort of got our shit together, called Justin. He was available. He had time. We went went into Stars and sold it. Wow. Well, that speaks a lot to your devotion towards finding great projects and great art. The fact that you could remember something from 15, 16 years ago, still be interested. Good ideas don't ever leave you. Well said. Well, Justin, what's the longest that you've ever worked on a project for? And you don't have to say what it is, but how long it was in development for and they're being drafted and redrafted. I'm assuming not 15 years. Uh, no. Um, I mean, that's an interesting question. I mean, how long between working on it and it getting to the screen? That, sure. Um, I don't know. I mean, like it's a miracle that anything ever happens, right? You need, and then it's another miracle that's good. You need so many things. <laughs> you, need it, you need so many things to align um to work so you can have a you know i've worked on films where it's you have the director and you have uh you know and then everything's working and there's one actor whose schedule changes and then everything else falls apart around it so that can happen and then but as everyone said you know there's a certain amount of faith that a really good idea will come back around um and and, you know in this in this case i think you know what certainly changed for those 15 years is suddenly long-form television was the mainstay of the business and this is a a story that needs to be told over eight uh, episodes, I would argue. Well, the last question before I let you both go, Erwin, a good friend of mine who's a legendary like artist manager in music, basically said he didn't get into film because you had to have 80 projects going for one to really take off and be the thing that pays off. Is that ratio way off base, that one in 80 for you? It is for me. <laughs> it is off. It is way off for me. Uh, I more like a one in 30? There aren't 80 things that I'd like to do. <laughs> uh, I don't, because I don't. when you're picking what to work on, you'd better make sure it's something you want to do because it's going to be two to three years of your life. So it, it, the whole idea of throwing shit against the wall uh, doesn't really work because the thing you care least about is probably the thing that is going to get going. So I, I, I would really want to do it. 
I would add that say Irwin is a, one of the unique, you know, there's a handful of producers who you never in a meeting with, there's anyone else in the room. I've never been in a room with Irwin with a development executive or assistant. It's just him and I going through the script. Uh, and that's, I think, that's how you you have a pedigree like that. I mean, and there's a other handful of producers I've worked with that it's, these are the projects they care deeply about and they're moving them forward. Well, congratulations on getting something made. That's fantastic. And looking forward to what's to come from both of you in the near future. Thank, Thank you. you. Outrocast.